Hi all, I'm Glenn and I'm going to talk about a library I wrote in Java for working with Commodore disk images. I've been working on it for quite a while and it's especially good with GEOS files. I'll talk a little bit about the API and then I'll show some examples written with it including a GUI program and a web app for exploring GEOS fonts. If you're curious about the tools I use, everything was done on Linux using open source software. The code was written in NetBeans. The web app I'll be showing uses a Postgres database and is deployed on the Pyara app server. And this video was made using Kden Live, GIMP, and some other open source tools. Please be gentle with me as it's my first time making a video like this. All the code I'll be showing can be found in my repo on GitLab, so if you'd like to have a closer look at the code or clone it, just go to gitlab.com slash sendby. That's Charlie Echo November Bravo Echo. The main class in the library is DiskImage, which is an abstract class containing methods for things like reading a directory, reading GeoWrite files as text, and finding the number of free blocks on a disk. There are also some lower level operations like sector allocation, and sector reading and writing. Note that the code in this class is not dependent on the type of image, D64 or D81. Calls are made to static methods in a geometry class to get things like the directory track number or location and size of the block availability map. The concrete classes D64 image and D81 image contain no code at all except for a constructor that sets the image type and then delegates to the superclass. There's also a disk image factory which can create new empty disk images. Let's have a look at some of the things we can do with this library. Recently, Bruce Thomas was looking for a graphic of a running shoe with the Commodore logo on it that appeared in a screenshot from the GS 1.2 user's manual. The screenshot also showed a photo album named Sneaker Album, so several people started looking for files like this. This picture doesn't show the photo album, but it's from the 1.3 manual. How could this library help with the search? I threw together a little program based on my library, and here's the code. This is just a loop to go through every file in the target directory looking for disk images. For each image, we'll call a find method. We start by creating the appropriate type of disk image and reading its directory. Then we look at each file on the image. If it's not a GIOS file, ignore it. If it's not a GIOS data file, ignore it. If the data file isn't a photo album, ignore it. If it is and the name contains sneaker, we've got a hit. Log it. But wait, there's more. I didn't get a hit on the first run, so I decided to look at each scrap in each photo album to see if it had sneaker in the name. Since only a later version allowed naming individual scraps, I had to get the photo album's format version, and if it was 2.1, I could list the scraps by name. Just out of curiosity, I also wrote code to count up how many of the various photo album versions I ran across. So you can see that although this got a bit of feature creep, everything I wanted to do, I could do with the library code. In fact, if we look at the log file, we see the performance is quite good. I don't even know how many files it looked at in total, but it found 1,065 disk images, and of those, 241 had GS photo albums. As you can see, searching every file on each of these images took under two seconds, but I still didn't get a hit. You're probably wondering if Bruce ever found his picture. Eventually, Werner Weicht over in Germany located the GeoPaint image. But this is still a good example of how easy the library is to use and how everything builds on everything else. Next, I'll show a GUI disk image explorer, which is probably the most useful thing to come from this project. I use it all the time to quickly find out what's on a disk image. If you want to try it out, there's a tarball with the jar files on my website. You need to have Java 11 or greater installed. Just extract the tarball into a directory and run the batch script. 
if you're not running Linux, you'll need to tweak that batch script a little bit. The source code is in my repo on GitLab in a project cleverly named D64 GUI. This is the app. As we can see, I've given props where props are due to my quality control engineer. Let's start by opening the Promal 2.1 disk. If I double click a sequential file, he'll try and display it as text. That doesn't look right, so let's shift the font. Better, but if you look closely, you can see that it's not actually Petsky. If we click the ASCII button, we'll see the file in ASCII and he won't bother trying to use the Commodore font. And speaking of props, that was the Unicode font by style. Double-clicking a program file shows a hex dump with the ability to jump forward and backward in the chain. The hex dumps are editable and you can write a sector back to the image file. There are also some lower level actions like viewing the directory as hex, again with the ability to move backward and forward through the chain. You can also ask for the directory header and for those of us who can't read the BAM from a hex dump, there's a traditional BAM display. This also works on a 1581 image, although of course it's a lot bigger and has to be scrolled. But where this program really shines is with GEOS files. I'll open a GeoWrite work disk. As we scroll through the directory, we see the GEOS icon, the info text, and the GEOS file type information along with the full GS timestamp. Here's a font. If we double click on it, we can see detailed information about it and render some sample text. Here's a GeoWrite file. We can double click it to view the text without formatting or graphics. This is useful when you have a disk full of GeoWrite files and want to quickly find out what's in them. Just for comparison, here's how that file looks in GEOS. There's also the ability to convert all the GeoWrite files on an image to text files on your PC. I use this when working on a programming project to export my source code for backups and revision control. You can also search for text in all of the GeoWrite files on an image. This program is a good example of the kind of thing that can be built on top of this library, and I have lots of ideas for things I'd like to add to it. The last program I'll show that's built on this library is a web app for exploring GEOS fonts. It's in my GitLab repo under the name GeoFont Web. In this app, the fonts are stored in a database rather than a disk image, so it uses its own APIs rather than the disk image class. When we read a VLIR record, we're getting the whole stream of bytes from a database record rather than reading a chain of tracks and sectors into a byte array. We don't have a disk image to read in any case, so most of the font APIs are static methods in the D64 utility class. They can still be used with disk images though, since the APIs to read a chain of sectors or a VLIR record return a byte array which can then be passed to the font APIs. This is what the GUI program uses for doing font previews. This web app allows anyone to explore my GS font collection, as well as selecting fonts for download. Although I still don't have all my GS fonts loaded into the database, there are over 500 to explore. You'll see that it also supports the mega fonts used by GeoPublish. The way I imagine it being used is by someone who is working on a GeoWrite or GeoPublish document. You can go shopping for fonts, adding some to the right-hand list as you go, until you're ready to download them in a disk image. Then it uses the Disk Image Factory class to create an empty disk image, the Disk Image class's Make Geos Disk API to write the Geos signature and off-page directory block, and its own API to write the GEOS fonts to the disk image, although it does call the sector allocation routines from the disk image class. I hope some of y'all found this useful. 
If you have questions, you can join us in the C64 Friends IRC channel on Freenode or drop me an email. And as always, thank you ladies and gentlemen for your kind attention and I hope to see you all in person at next year's VCF Midwest.